Hello everybody, good evening and welcome to Virtual Church. Um, we are here again on a Sunday evening in a very, very wet and windy Hampshire. And um, I must say at the very outset that we are experiencing one or two light flickerings going on here. So if we go off line, then that is why. <laughs> Blame the storm. The first hymn that we had tonight is a very well-known hymn. It's one of my favourites. Leaders, Heavenly Father, leaders over the world's tempestuous sea. It was requested by John Mander. Now, John Mander celebrated his 50th year wedding anniversary yesterday. So that's really quite an achievement. John, so that was especially for you. Our next hymn is going to be a request from Nick Maguire. It's, O Thou Who Camest um, From Above. It's from the Notorious Red Hymn Book, which can often go wrong. Um, and it's number 258. It's a request from Nick Maguire. 258, where is it? Beautiful, there it is, there it is. Here we go, so this is a request from Nick. Um, o thou who camest from above, the fire celestial to impart, kindle a flame of sacred love on the mean altar of my heart.
beautiful hymn there, O Thou Who Camest From Above, the fire celestial to impart, kindle a flame of sacred love on the mean altar of mine heart. I love the verse too. Uh, there, let it for thy glory burn with inextinguishable uh, blaze. The, that's a, I love that long word, all of those syllables. You don't often get words that long in a hymn, and it's such a wonderful word to sing. Gorgeous music there by um, Samuel Sebastian Wesley. Uh, it's called Hereford, as I'm sure most of you, most of you know. And that was a request uh, from Nick uh, Maguire. So thank you very much, Nick, for sending that in. Now, we have a little, a, a bit of a birthday boy, I think. Uh, ben Wallace says that it was his birthday um, this week. Didn't say when it was and didn't say how many birthdays that he's had. However, he has requested um, a hymn, which the words are my favourite words. Love divine, or love's excelling. I think you guys know that already. You know how, how much I like playing Blind Worm. But Ben has actually requested um, and sent in a high quality scan um, of this tune uh, called Beecher. And I think a lot of you will know the tune, um, particularly um, stateside. Uh, but here in the UK, it's not a tune that we really uh, sing overly uh, regularly. So Ben, here we go. This is Love Divine and Love's Excelling. Four verses, which is nice. Um, to the tune uh, Beecher. Ben, I'll leave it to you to decide whether you want to disclose how many birthdays you've had so far.
So, Love Divine or Love's Excelling, um, not to the tune Blind Worm and not to the tune Love Divine by uh, John Stainer, but to the tune uh, Beecher by John Zundel. Apparently, this is the this is the, what um, the Methodists sing. So, actually, I do really need to get a Methodist hymn book. I think that's one hymn book that we haven't got here at BIS. I've got a pile of American books and, of course, lots of English books, but um, no Methodist books yet. Uh, I think we need to get one called Hymns and Psalms. So we'll we'll look out for that and um, expect it to um, appear on the music desk sometime soon. So next week, this time next week, you would have all seen um, a very exciting organ recital given by Colin Walsh, Dr. Colin Walsh. He was here during the week, uh, only a few days ago, actually recording an organ recital um, on this organ, playing uh, Bach. Uh, he played this. He played that extremely well um, in one take. Um, he played a lot of French music, and it's, it's spectacular. And then, but he also played, I asked him to, whilst he was here, because Colin is a very good uh, player of hymns and a very good last verse reharmonizer. Um, and he played uh, a hymn, he recorded a hymn for us, which I'll feature in next week's Virtual Church. So make sure you um, listen out next week for Colin Walsh's um, um, contribution to Virtual Church. Ah, thank you. It's been handed a book here. Okay, so just before um, we go on to this, <laughs> we're going to have a, um, a, a request from Mark um, Cardanez. Sorry, Mark Cardanez. <laughs> um, I put an extra syllable in there, Mark. Apologies about that. Now, Mark um, has requested me to play a hymn in memory of um, his uncle, to whom he was very close. Um, so Mark has lost a family member just um, just recently. So can we all please bear Mark um, Cardinals in our thoughts and in our prayers and in our minds um, as we <coughs> excuse me as we um, as we hear, listen to, or sing the next hymn. I heard the voice of Jesus say, "Come unto me and rest. Lay down, thou weary one. Lay down thy head upon my breast." The tune, as most of you will know, um, is called King's Fold, uh, which has been adapted uh, from an English song uh, by Ray Fawn Williams. So we'll have three verses of this. I think rather, well, there are only three verses in here. And then, um, oh, and whilst we're having those three verses, please bear Mark in, um, in your thoughts.
Mark, well, that one was for you. I don't know whether you're with us uh, live, but I, um, I know you'll listen back during the week. Um, so my thoughts um, and prayers um, are with you and your family. And I know that a lot of people in the BIS community will also be thinking of you uh, at this time. So I heard the voice of Jesus say, come unto me and rest. In memory of Mark's uncle. Now, I'd mentioned earlier on that John Mander, is John Mander in with us? Another one who I think listens back during the week. is celebrating his 50th year anniversary. So actually, we've got a few requests um, from John. I'm actually spoiling him. John's been a member of BIS for a very long time. Um, and I want to just give him some treats. He's actually made a number of requests. So the first one was um, the first hymn tonight. The second request he's made is a trumpet tune by Henry Purcell. Now the problem we have, it's not really a problem, it's just a slight, sort of we have to just work our way around it, is there's no big trumpet on this organ or no big tuba which you might use this on. However, we do have big chamards, so I think the, um, the Rotterdam chamards will do just nicely. <laughs> Let's couple them down to the choir trumpet, actually. That one might just uh, create a nice round sound. And then we'll have accompanied um, uh, on the great and swell. So this is what um, John Mander walked down the aisle um, to greet his wife, Hilary, um, 50 years ago. Of course, the wonderful thing about this particular trumpet tune um, is, well, there are two things really. It's just um, musically perfect for a wedding. It's uplifting, it's happy. Um, but the second thing is it's, it's, you can cut it, you can chop bits out and it becomes um, quite easily the perfect length depending on how long the aisle or the nave is uh, in the church where the bride is um, about to walk. Um, so. So, John, that one was just for you and uh, for your wife, Hilary. Now, I need to ask, um, it's, it's always nice to know uh, whether we have any new listeners in with us. Um, we are, we are, we are um, the community is growing every week with new subscribers, so it's always good to welcome new people. Uh, but it's nice to actually see new members in the, uh, in the chat. So if you are new, if this is your first um, virtual church, please do say hello and um, it would just be lovely to, to see your name. John, John Mander there. John Mander is chatting away. So it's good to have you with us, John. 
And OK, so actually what we will do, how many people are we now? 200 and uh, about 240. What I would like you to do is, um, and we'll do it a bit later on as well. Maybe we'll do it on the hour. Could you just give me a plus one? Plus one and your location. It's always nice to know where in the world you all are. Okay, where should we go next? Let's go into a request from um, from Harry from Harry Powell. Now I need to go to my green hymn book, my favourite hymn book, um, to number one hundred and five. Now, what is it? What is it you're all saying? It is. It's not that. I didn't think it was. That's why I sort of prolonged me saying what it was. It's oh, the deep, deep love of Jesus. Now, we're going to Harry. We're going to come back to you uh, next. We're going to go on to a request from um, from Jeremy, who's requested um, Jerusalem, the Golden, which is actually one of my favourite hymns. More, mainly because it's in my favourite key of D flat major, um, Jerusalem the Golden with milk and honey blessed, beneath thy contemplation sink heart and voice oppressed. The tune is called the tune is called E wing, and Jeremy has requested this uh, for another actually for another uh, solemn occasion. Um, um, it's for his sister who passed away rather suddenly. So. Jeremy, if you're with us, please do say hello. Um, and this one is especially uh, for you, remembering uh, your sister.
What a wonderful hymn, beautiful. I think that, that if, we, if we are judging hymns on um, quite simply music alone, um, that one would be in my top 10. Um, I just love the, I love going towards the end, going up to that big D flat chord with the, um, the major six. That bit is just such a wonderful moment. Um, so thank you very much um, for requesting um, uh, that one, um, uh, Jeremy. And I hope that was um, that's okay. Um, I'm very sorry to hear about your sister. That's really sad, really sad. Um, but thoughts are with you. Okay, so Harry, Harry Powell, who I mentioned just a minute ago, um, I don't actually have the words to your hymn, but the words are, Oh, the deep, deep love of Jesus. Now, the hymn that um, Harry has requested is quite a well-known hymn, uh, tune at least, and um, the tune is called Ebenezer, which we've had a number of times. Uh, we've had a number of times here in virtual church. And um, I'm just going to just quickly look in. I've got an, another hymn book here, which it, where it might, it might just be. Um, let's have a look. Oh, the deep, deep love. Uh, oh, radiant, oh, sacred, oh, morning. There's nothing with oh, the, or anything. Um, no. Uh, no, never mind. So with the three, three, the three verses, I know that much. Uh, and Harry has requested it because um, he quite simply says in, in his reason. Um, so uh, Harry uh, sang it in his school chapel um, and whenever they sang it, it gave him the shivers. So I think that's a good enough reason to request a hymn here on virtual church. So Harry, here we go. We have three verses of um, Oh, the deep, deep love of Jesus to the tune Ebenezer.
Well, Harry, I can perfectly see uh, why that hen gives you the shivers. Because I can just imagine what it sounds like being sung in chapel with um, uh, boys or girls singing their hearts out uh, to an organ um, going full pelt. I can just imagine it sounding very, very exciting. I hope that was all right for you. I wonder whether that gave you the shivers. <laughs> So this week has been rather wet and windy for a lot of us here in, um, in Europe. And um, I mean, Friday was the worst day um, here, uh, certainly in Hampshire, when the storm came over from um, sort of the west part of England and came, worked its way through Devon and Dorset and then up, up, up into London. And actually today is still really um, windy. Tonight is extremely windy and uh, very wet. Um, just um, took the bin out just before virtual church, opening the door and you could hear the, tr the trees, you know, swaying and like, blimey, it is, it's really picking up again. Uh, luckily around here, um, I mean, we actually haven't been too, uh, too affected by it. Um, we're actually quite sheltered. We're on a, we are on a hill. But we're actually on the slope of the hill, so we are protected by um, other houses and, I guess, um, vegetation and stuff. Um, and a few trees down around, but I wonder, has it impacted you? Have you had any travel disruption um, as a result of the storm? Um, and I'd be interested to know whether, you know, you've lost power. Actually, um, where, where I live, uh, most people had a big power cut on, uh, on Friday for hours. But incredibly, um, we didn't have a power cut. I don't know why we didn't have a power cut. Um, well, that would have been quite devastating because I was doing quite a lot of work on the organ on Friday. And um, the, like I said earlier, the lights have been f flickering here, um, but they're holding up. They're holding up at the minute. So let's, let's keep our fingers crossed that we don't get that power cut. We're going to go into a hymn um, for David Kubaki, who requests hymns most weeks. Um, so thanks, uh, thanks Dan for those, and thank you for requesting the Brahms Fugue flat. You will get it one day, um, but there's one person, um, I think it was uh, a Jerry Hall, who requested um, a long time ago um, the sixth trio sonata, and he had to wait a year for it. And there was someone else who requested uh, the first movement of Vidor V, who waited a very long time, but he got it eventually. <laughs> Or was it Vito 5? Or was it Vito 6? I can't remember. Um, so but good things do come to those who wait, Daniel. So um, in the meantime, whilst you're waiting for the fugue in A flat minor, you're going to have Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, early in the morning our song shall rise to thee. And we're going to have a little bit of Noel Ross on actually um, to see what he's done with this um, wonderful tune. Uh, 228 in here, um, 228, there we go, okay, four verses of Holy, Holy, Holy.
I'm just seeing a bit of chat about um, in which key this is normally played. I've only ever seen it in D major. I've never seen it in C or in E major. Interesting. In C, in C major. It's quite low in C, I think. Just about it work. I think I still think it would be a bit, little bit too high in E personally. Um, if it was, um, if, if I was uh, conducting the hymn or playing it in a church, I would definitely prefer it in D or E flat or you know, D sharp. Um, but I wouldn't say it would be an E. It's interesting that it's in E. Who who was it who said that? Barry. What hymn book is that? Um, I'd like to know what hymn book that is. That's really interesting. Um, okay, let's let's go on now. We're going to turn to the ELW, the Evangelical Lutheran Worship Hymn Book. This is what this is one of the hymn books that um, was sent in um, by one of our good American listeners, number seven hundred and eighty-five. This is um, um, when peace like a river attendeth my way. When sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot, thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. This is for Ron, who's requesting this um, for, her, for his auntie Sue, who um, was recently, let me read this. Um, this is what, this is what um, Ron, wrote on the, um, Ron wrote on the BIS request form. So I am very uh, close to my aunt Sue, who was recently diagnosed with stage four breast cancer. Obviously, this is um, uh, devastating. But when I heard um, this hymn, um, um, the, uh, the power of the words and the music spoke to me and gave strength to my soul. Isn't that really nice? Um, it would mean so much if I were to play it in honor of uh, Ron's um, aunt. So Ron, of course I will play this in honor of your, uh, of your Aunt Sue. We have this hymn um, fairly regularly actually. It's a popular hymn here on Virtual Church um, and rightly so, it is gorgeous. Um, so it's called When Peace Like a River. When peace like a river attendeth my way. And then the words which keep reoccurring are, it is well with my soul, it is well with my soul. Reassuring words. So Ron, this one is for you.
<laughs> so the next hymn, um, it, rather hilariously, um, is, <laughs> is in, in memory, not in memory, in honour of um, Larry's cat. <laughs> so it's, uh, it's uh, I'm not sure how old Larry's cat is, but it's, um, it's Larry, um, <laughs> Larry, Larry's cat likes this hymn. I don't, I'm not quite sure. How, how do you know your cat likes this hymn? I'm, <laughs> Larry, let us all know what um, sort of indications that your cat um, does. Does, it, does she start purring? Does she, um, um, well, I don't know, what it, does the tail start doing funny things? Uh, does she walk on the speakers? Um, I know when my cats are excited because they walk on the organ. And actually, they're, they're, both, they're, they're both shut out tonight, um, but they get on the organ when they're excited. So what are we going to have? We're going to have Sing We of um, the Blessed Mother. No, glorious, well actually, sorry, the words are glorious things of thee are spoken. Um, but actually, I've, I've actually just got a different uh, page open here for the tune. The tune's called Abbots Lee. Um, so uh, do you know what, the wonderful thing about these special treasures is you can sing any words you like. You can make them up. No one will hear you. Um, so glorious things of thee are spoken in honor of um, Larry Latham's uh, cat. So that's a really wonderful sort of thing to, to do. So here we go, Larry, let us know whether your cat responds well to this particular rendition of Abbott's Lee.
<laughs> Great, I love all this cat talk, it's wonderful. Um, <laughs> I don't know whether um, uh, organ music, I mean, when I did the 12 hour organ marathon last week, when I played the bark back to back, or bark to bark for 12 hours, a lot of you would have seen Nala was just, she was, she was chilled out on the chair right next to me for, I don't know, a good nine hours of that. So she, I think she, she might be, um, she's probably heard that piece more times than any other cat in the world. I don't know, does she hold the world record for hearing that piece as a cat? Possibly, possibly, I don't know. <laughs> right, should we go to King Loudrup? Well, if we go to King Loudrup, then I need to fire up the iPad. Um, this, is, this is a piece, um, an Irish piece, um, arranged here uh, by, well, no one better really, because it's uh, Stanford um, is a gr was one of our great Irish composers. And possibly, I don't know whether, uh, this is an arrangement here by Stanford. I think this is, I don't know whether this is meant to be sung congregationally or not. Uh, King Loudrup, possibly you can in, uh, enlighten us. Is this sung as a hymn? There's a, there's a really uh, quite a quite an interesting bit later on where it suddenly goes into G major in a very different tune, very different tempo, before then going back into G minor. Uh, but it is it's known as the um, um, St Patrick's Breastplate. I bind unto myself today the strong name of the Trinity. Uh, by invocation of the same, the three in one and one in three. As I said, arranged here by Charles Villiers Stanford. So here we go. So this one's quite loud. So I'll, I'll actually hold off some of the stops uh, initially and then we'll bring on the armory, <laughs> um, the backup, if you like, later on. So this is for King Loudrup.
realised um, quite soon after starting to play that, I think I'd um, I'd grabbed the choral version of it. So the the organ part actually in places doesn't doesn't bear much relation to what the choir or the, um, the congregation are doing. But King, I hope that was all right for you. Actually, I hope you don't mind, but I missed out a couple of pages because I thought it was just, um, it was going on for quite a while. <laughs> it seemed to go on for quite a, a lot longer than, than um, it normally does. I don't, are there more verses? Um, but I forgot to mention just before we started that that one was requested um, because uh, King Laudrup's third, or the arrival of the, uh, the safe arrival of the third child um, for King Laudrup and his wife. So congratulations um, to your third child. Um, wonderful time for you to go through all, to go through all of that new childbirth. Um, I think, as you all know um, from um, Caroline chatting earlier on, our little um, Hugo isn't very well. Um, so you know you, you you have to roll with the um, I guess the um, the swings with the childbirth because you have the wonderful ups and then the downs as well. And we're sort of hovering somewhere in the middle at the minute due to uh, illness, <laughs> and it does get a little bit tiring. Uh, quite literally, when they, when they don't sleep. But uh, it's all so worth it, isn't it? So worth it. So congratulations um, for the arrival of your third child. That's really terrific. Hopefully one day we'll catch you up. <laughs> okay, let's zoom on to our next hymn, shall we? We can need to go to our favourite or my favourite hymn book, um, number 271, four, Alleluia, um, four, what is it? Um, another request for John Mander, who I said, I said a few times now um, has celebrated his 50th wedding anniversary. So another one, John, for you. Uh, Alleluia, sing to Jesus, here's the scepter, here's the throne. Alleluia, here's the triumph, here's the victory alone. The tune is called Hifridol. Um, it, uh, the melody is by Richard Hugh Pritchard. Doesn't quite say who the harmony is by. I guess it's the editors of this hymn book. And the words are by W. Chatterson Dix. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't need no raw song for this. I'll, just, I'll do my own stuff. So this hymn was sung at John Mander's wedding 50 years ago. So let's all imagine we are now 50 years younger and we are singing this at John Mander's wedding.
wonderful um, hymn. Yes, John, and of course, you, you did say in your email to me that the words you had to the, to the, uh, to the tune there um, were uh, Love Divine and Love's Excelling. Of course, they do fit. And actually, I, I should say that if you, uh, well, I hope it all, most of you will uh, watch Virtual Church next week. Um, why wouldn't you? <laughs> um, um, the next week will be pre-recorded because uh, Caroline and I um, are actually having just a couple of days away in the Cotswolds uh, with my uh, family, my, my uh, father and my sister and her family, which is uh, really nice. We're looking forward to that immensely. Uh, but I will pre-record, of course, we can't have a Sunday without a virtual church, so we, I will pre-record a VC uh, next week, and in it will be um, a pre-recorded rendition of that tune uh, by Colin Walsh. So Colin Walsh played that tune just like that, just like I did, four verses, a uh, final verse with his own uh, reharmonization so we'll have that in next week's virtual church next hymn is for julian and it's um one of the uh, beautiful um tunes by um orlando gibbons it's called well i don't it's called song 67 give me the wings of faith to rise within the veil and see the saints above how great their joys how bright their glories be There's a wonderful um, um, arrangement of these words by Ernest Bullock. Some, whatever it does, um, in, the, in the English choral repertoire, just uh, has a really wonderful um, uh, word painting on the word um, death. So where is that in here? Verse three: Ascribe their conquest to the lamb, to the lamb, their triumph to his death. But with a correct pedal note there. Um, and then the echo dies away. Oops. And then they marked the footsteps that he trod. If you don't know it, it's well worth checking out. It's, it's, it's really, really nice. So Julian has requested this. Um, um, Julian has requested it because he simply says um, that he doesn't think that we've had it before. And I think you're right, actually. We haven't had it before. We have had it during the marathon where I played the entire NEH, um, which took me nearly 18 hours. Um, but I don't think it's been requested. So good spot, Julian. Um, we'll have it now. Uh, here we go.
Now, there is actually in NEH a, a tune um, adjacent to that by Derek Williams. Um, listen to this. This is actually a really, really quite a beautiful tune. Uh, no one's requested this. But listen, have a listen to this. Don't go anywhere. Play that once more, but I'm going to solo out the tune because this is such, such a wonderful uh, tune, which is um, very rarely done actually. Listen to this once more. I think that's a really, really strong tune, actually. Um, in some ways, prefer, I mean, I think Orlando Gibbons was the master of composition and actually English, um, um, well, I think church music owed a lot to, to Orlando Gibbons. Orlando Gibbons gave to, um, to church music what J.S. Bach gave to classical music, basically. And I think um, Derek Williams' tune, dare I say it, is a bit more effective than Orlando Gibbons' um, um, hymn tune here on the left. That is not to say that um, Orlando Gibbons' tune here has been um, doctored by various editors over the years and changed beyond recognition. So I'm, I'm, I'm willing to give Orlando the benefit of the doubt there. <laughs> okay, let's stick in NEH um, 141. Now, one of our long-standing um, uh, members, um, supporters, and fellow Howells lovers has requested um, this wonderful tune by Herbert Howells. Now, Herbert Howells is, um, as, as you'll know, um, I think one of my favourite people in the world. He wrote a, uh, just a, some really quite stunning music, uh, both organ, choral, and a number of hymns. And Paul Larson uh, has requested uh, this one. It's only three verses, it's actually relatively short. It's called Salisbury, and it is named after Salisbury um, in Wiltshire, uh, Salisbury Cathedral, uh, which is where uh, Howells was the assistant organist for a while before uh, becoming uh, too ill to carry on his duties there. Uh, so this is not as well known or not as popular as, as his other, um, his most famous hymn tune, uh, Michael, or My Hope on God is Founded. Uh, but it is nonetheless uh, beautiful. It's very brooding. It's in the wonderful key of, it's actually in D flat, but it sort of flirts with E flat minor and then goes around all, um, sort of stays around there, but goes, uh, includes a lot of um, passing um, harmonic uh, chromatic notes, is, is, is the word I was looking for there, chromatic notes, um, including E naturals and D naturals, C flats, and all sorts of stuff. So I know that Paul loves this, so I'm very happy to play it for Paul because Paul's done a lot for BIS over the years. So Paul, this one is just for you. Let's find a really rich, sonorous um, sound on this organ. So let's have some of the swell uh, reeds with the, with the box under control and then um, the, the, the um, diapasons on the other manual. So it's called Salisbury, Holy Spirit ever dwelling in the holiest realms of light, Holy Spirit ever brooding <laughs> over a world of gloom and night. It's well worth checking out if you haven't checked this out already. Just uh, before I start playing, the first uh, four chords um, are organ introduction. Okay, so if that puts you off a little bit, the first. Well, I'll tell you what I'll do is I'll play the first. I'll play the first bar down on the choir. So then, you, when, I, when I go up to the grate, you know that's when the tune starts.
Paul, I must apologize for playing that wrong chord in the first verse. Oh my goodness. I can't believe I did that. Um, so we have, look, look, let me explain what's going on here. So we have this chord here. I mean, that's, I see, that's wrong to a start. It's a C flat. <laughs> here, listen. There it is. could uh, write that that's chord progression and I wonder whether if there's anyone in the chat is Maurice in the chat I don't think he is actually um, if anybody in the chat who could analyze that particular chord um, I'm not quite sure what it would be um, um, what is the what's the B flat um, mode called I can't remember we have a C flat falling down to a B flat I think it's um, uh, um, um, that, but with added notes. So that will, be, that will, that will earn Morris. Oh, Morris, you are there. What is, um, yes, let me know what this um, chord is called, would you? You'll know, because I know you studied with Howells and you know all about Howells. Um, what is that chord? Anyway, so that's called Salisbury. Let's go on to our next hymn, which is actually going to, we're going to turn over to our American hymn book, the second American, American hymn book tonight. It's a um, 1982 hymnal, uh, number five, oh gosh, it's right at the very end, number 546. This hymn book is massive. And you know what I should do? I should play this from cover to cover in an organ marathon. Oh no, wait, I've already done that one. <laughs> I've already played this from cover to cover and it took me two days. It's that big. 24 hours this one took me. Um, Awake my soul, stretch every nerve and press with vigour on. A heavenly race demands thy zeal and, um, and an immortal crown and an immortal crown. Uh, those words are repeated. The music is actually by Handel. And the words um, are by Philip, uh, Philip Dod Doddridge, um, both, um, both of whom are actually contemporaries. So obviously Handel was born in the same year as J.S. Bach, but lived another, eight, uh, lived another nine years. But Philip um, Doddridge was born in 1702. So it's um, entirely possible, but then died in 1751. So he wasn't actually very old. It was only 49 when he died. But it's entirely possible that those guys knew each other from their time in London. Um, so this is a, a request from Tristan. And this one doesn't look overly familiar, apart from when we've played it um, for the, uh, for the uh, organ marathon. So let's see how it, um, let's see how it sounds, shall we?
So that was a good little tune, <laughs> a good tune by Handel. We're just going to actually take a, a little a deviation from the pre-requests. So all the requests tonight have come in via the BIS request form. Um, I think as far as I'm aware, this is the first request that we've had tonight, uh, which has been made live. Um, and this person's name is Micromade. Good name. And I wonder whether you are still in the chat. If you are in the chat, please do um, give us sort of a, a little hello. Um, there is a green hill far away without a city wall where the, dear, where the dear Lord was crucified who died to save us all. Uh, five verses of this really beautiful tune by, um, by Horsley, um, obviously for the season of Passion Tide. Tonight's voluntary, by the way, um, was requested by John Mander and um, was played um, as he and Hilary were walking out of uh, the church in which they were married 50 years ago. So I thought I would um, play that for John today. It's a big piece by, um, by Louis Vienne, which I think you might recognise. But before we get there, we'll have a couple more hymns, and including this one, There is a Green Hill Far Away for Micro Maid. <laughs> So micro made. I don't know whether you are still with us. I have not seen you in the chat, but um, if you're watching that back on catch up, uh, thank you for requesting that because it's such a um, such a beautiful hymn, and I, I was very happy to play it for you. Let's have. Um, we had a request from. Um, I'm not quite sure who it's from, but a, a request for should I say? I vow to thee. Uh, my country. Um, I think we should have that and then we're going to have one more hymn after that and that is um, a rather uplifting hymn uh, for the season of Easter. <laughs> so 
So um, the tune is called uh, Fax Ted. Um, either the common words sung to this tune are either out of thee, my country, or as they are in this particular hymn book, O oh God beyond all praising, but whatever words you like to sing. So let's just have a listen to this fantastic hymn, and then we'll have one more hymn, and then we'll have the um, um, we'll have the voluntary. This is actually a request from uh, from Katie. So Katie, good work in requesting such a marvelous hymn. Um, I'm very I am very happy to play this for you, as you are such a, a regular and a dedicated member of our community. So thank you very much, Katie, for all of your humour and company over the many months. I vow to thee, my country. Katie, a really terrific hymn. Thank you very much. You always request good hymns, and I'm very grateful for that. There's a couple of things that I'm also grateful for. The, um, there's a tow piston down here, which I've just had fixed. It was on, on, my, um, on my snagging list, and it's the tow piston for the 32-foot reed, and it's getting quite a lot of use tonight. I've got the 32-foot reed over on the right-hand side, and then the 32-foot flue over on the left. Having those two pistons is really, really useful indeed. That's one thing I'm grateful for. The second thing I'm even more grateful for is uh, James Palmer, who's been, um, he's been sitting in my right ear, um, in, in this ear. You won't have seen it because the cameras are over there, but I've got an earpiece in um, and James has been chatting away to me. So if you've, been, if you've seen me sort of talking, um, during the hymns, I've been either shouting uh, at Caroline to bring me a, you know, bring me a voluntary, um, or asking James um, uh, what on earth to, to do next. Um, so James, thank you very much for your help. Uh, it's been extremely helpful, and it's great to have someone um, as organised and on the ball 
like yourself. So I do hope that you'll, you'll be able to do it uh, again in the future. So to say thank you to James, um, we're going to have a request which James has made uh, tonight. It's um, a corker of a hymn. It's fantastic. It's Thine Be the Glory, the, one of the tunes, one of the hymns for the season of Easter. Um, and then after this, we will go into our um, very naughty voluntary tonight. Um, Thine be the glory, risen, conquering son, endless is the victory thou over death hast won. You know the words to this, you know the music, you know it's by Handel and you know it's by, you know it's called Maccabeus. Three verses, only three, um, and it's over before you know it, um, which is a bit of a shame, isn't it? But hey ho, let's go, let's go into um, um, Thine be the glory for James, who has been producing today's virtual church. And I should say as well that James has requested this on, be on behalf of his father because this is, um, this is his favourite hymn. And there's a possibility, uh, James tells me, that um, they might be listening. So, <laughs> Mr and Mrs Palmer, if you're listening, um, you're very welcome. And Mr Palmer, this hymn is, uh, I think, especially for you. James, and for Mr. Palmer, that was especially 
for you. <laughs> so that marks actually the end of the, uh, the hymn section um, of Virtual Church. Now we're just going to zoom into a little bit of, um, uh, zoom into France, as it were, and listen to a bit of um, uh, Louis Rien uh, for his finale from his first organ symphony. Um, I think this is, this is along with Carry On to Westminster, uh, Vienne's most popular and famous piece. Rightly so, because it's just terrific. It has a great tune and um, it's just it's really a lot of fun. So John Mander, I, I presume you're still with us, John. You can't have turned off by now unless you've gone to bed. Um, John had this to walk out to at his wedding. And I think this is a really popular piece uh, for weddings. Um, I'm not surprised he had it. So let's get some stops, shall we? Let's just have, let's have, um, well, let's just have everything really, the, the kitchen sink. That's basically the way to do it, isn't it? <clears throat> there we go. Um, so if I whack uh, six at that point, perhaps. Yeah. There we go. Cool, John, so this is the Vienne, the finale from the first organ uh, symphony. Hope you enjoy.
Well, that was the final from Venet Vienne's um, uh, first organ symphony, uh, specially played there for um, John Mander, who had that uh, as his uh, recessional for his wedding 50 years ago. Um, played on the magnificent organ in the uh, St. Barvo Kirk in, uh, um, no, sorry, St. Lawrence Kirk in Rotterdam. Um, the, wonderful, um, the wonderful organ there, definitely Rotterdam. Definitely 100% Rotterdam. Um, you can tell by these, these epic shamards, can't you? <laughs> very, very reedy. So that draws a close to the VC today. Thank you very much once again, James, uh, for your help. Um, terrific stuff. I can't wait to, um, to work with you again. Um, next week is a pre-recorded virtual church. Um, so we'll have um, all of the hymns as usual um, sat here. Um, requested by your good selves, so make sure that you get your requests in for next week in good time because I'll need to record them um, probably on Thursday actually because we're going away on Friday so make sure they're in at least by Wednesday night <laughs> um, if not then you, you're not going to have your request this week um, what else is there to say just thank you very much for, having, for, 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 for being here for, um, for your company so until uh, next time, uh, which will be next week, next Saturday, Colin Walsh's very, very special organ recital. Um, next Saturday, eight o'clock. Don't miss that. If you do, then what's the matter with you, frankly? It's just going to be an amazing organ recital. Um, Colin is one of our best players here in the UK, especially um, of Bach and French music. And uh, luckily for us, he's playing Bach and French music. Uh, so you're in for a real treat. Please don't miss that. Please, I'm just urging you not to miss it. You know, I wouldn't put anything online that I don't think you would like. <laughs> this is one of them. Colin's recital is phenomenal. Until next Saturday, I will be in the chat t taking a register of everyone who's there and everyone who's not. And if anyone's not there, I'll cross off your request <laughs> for next virtual church. <laughs> cool. Cheerio, everyone. Take care. Stay safe in this horrible weather. Um, and until next weekend, I will say uh, cheerio. Good night. <laughs>